back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes the topic for today is demand for money or motives for liquidity preference which is a very interesting and important topic under macroeconomics in this video i'll be covering about the three motives to demand for money the transaction motive precautionary motive and the speculative motive along with the liquidity trap so yeah let's get started also guys thank you so much for all the love you have been pouring on my channel and do like this video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already also follow me on my instagram handle 5 minute economics so firstly let me introduce the topic to all of you so i just use the term liquidity preference what does liquidity preference mean liquidity preference basically means the demand of a person to hold cash that is how much one is willing to keep his money in the form of cash cash as you know is a highly liquid asset in fact the most liquid asset so you know how much one is willing to keep cash in hand is our liquidity preference while studying the functions of money if you remember you definitely must have studied it serves a medium of exchange and a store of value that are the two reasons why we wish to hold cash because it is a medium of exchange we can buy anything in this world in return of money right we want to buy a watch we want to buy you know maybe a new dress we can buy in exchange of cash whereas it also serves as a storage of value it means that because it is not perishable we can use it at a later future date we can keep it and use it maybe in future it has medium of exchange and storage of value function coming to the motives to demand for money you know why do we demand money so there are three motives which we will be discussing in detail in the coming minutes one is transaction second is precaution third is speculation so basically these are the three motives to demand for money the first two were covered by the classical approach as well you know the classical economists but the third motive which is speculation was kind of left out by them and the keynesian school of thought then came in and you know spoke about all the three motives to demand for money so firstly let me talk about the very first and primary motive to demand for money which is the transaction motive so as i just told you transaction basically means to buy something you know to get something in exchange money serves as a transaction purpose so most of us to get our salary you know monthly or maybe weekly or biweekly but our expenditure is happening daily every day you know so we keep some money to facilitate the transactions and money serves as a transactionary motive in that form just like households like we keep money like businessmen and entrepreneurs they also keep some certain amount of money for transaction purposes you know maybe to buy raw materials to give salaries to the workers and so on and so forth because of money uh, having medium of exchange this motive is highly dependent on this very function medium of exchange you know because we can exchange anything in return of money it serves as a transaction purpose coming to next point which is level of income so transaction motive highly depends on the level of income a poor person will keep a very low amount of money because owing to his you know small income with him for transaction whereas a person a rich guy who is earning a lot of money will keep more money with himself to you know facilitate transactions if we draw a little curve out here we can see a straight line curve which is showing a positive relationship between level of income and his you know transactions moving ahead to price level so price level like the level of income also has a positive relationship with transactions as the price increases we tend to keep more money with us you know if you know price has doubled we have to keep more cash in hand to buy that good so both are directly proportional to each other certainty of income so you know if we are certain that okay the money is going to come our income is going to come next month we will keep a lesser portion with us but if we are uncertain that okay what if the salary comes or not due to covid or due to x y z reason so we will keep more money for our transaction purposes with us future expectations so if we expect you know the prices are going to get high in future we tend to keep more money in you know more cash in hand more transaction purposes ke liye we keep it more because we know in future that it is going to rise uh not dependent on roi so roi basically means rate of interest so Keynesian school of thought and also classical they said that transaction motive is only mostly dependent on you know the level of income which is the primary thing over here it is not dependent on roi they said that you know transactions don't depend on the rate of interest but in future when we study more theories we saw that bommel and tobin they did said that yes even uh, transaction motives depend on roi but right now we will say that it doesn't depend much on rate of interest so this is all about a transaction motive to demand for money 
moving ahead guys to our next motive to demand for money which is the precaution or precautionary motive so as the name suggests this motive is basically the desire to hold money for unforeseen contingencies maybe sickness accidents or anything which might happen to any one of us so we tend to hold money for that future contingency basically this actually depends a lot on the psychology of a person as well but let's not go over there now this motive is a very simple motive and very similar to what we did in the transaction motive you know similarly uh, to a to a household businessman also holds money for his precaution you know what if demand changes or government policy changes so we have to hold some money for that future unforeseen contingency similar to level of income if we have high level of income we can obviously keep more money for precaution uh, just like how we keep it for transaction motive and again here also certainty of income if we are certain of getting the money we will keep less money for precautionary purposes so this is one is a small and short one now we will be talking about the speculative motive now coming to the speculative motive to demand for money so this is an important one just pay attention over here so what does speculation basically means it is a desire to hold well to take advantage of the market movement so we all want to make a capital gain isn't it so we tend to hold money and in future when we know when we can make a capital gain out of that money why not do that so you know money help for speculation purposes helps us to gain something okay this concept was basically introduced by keynes as i had told right in the beginning that the first two approaches were covered by the classical economists but the third approach this was brought in only by keynes this motive is solely dependent on storage of value so the first motive was only dependent on medium of exchange precautionary motive has both the mixture of the storage of value and medium of exchange but the speculation motive is solely dependent on storage of value we can store the value of money that is the reason why we would we would like to you know keep it for speculatory purposes you know when we invest our money in shares ventures and so on we do get an interest you know in doing so so that attracts us to invest our money for speculatory purposes here guys roi which is rate of interest is the most dominant factor there we were talking about level of income when we spoke about transaction motive but when talking about speculative motive roi is very 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 important what does it say it states that for speculation less money is held at the current higher interest rate and more money under this motive will be held under lower rate of interest i will be explaining this very statement with the help of a diagram now so lastly guys i would draw your attention to this particular graph so on the x axis i have taken speculative demand for money whereas on the y axis i have taken rate of interest the shape of this lp which is the liquidity preference curve clearly shows us that there is an inverse relationship between rate of interest and a speculative demand for money we notice that a high rate of interest our speculative demand for money is very low but as we go down our rate of interest keeps falling our speculative demand for money keeps rising why do you think there is such a relationship because more money is kept for buying bonds at a higher rate of interest we will tend to invest more in bonds which will give us some return and less money will be kept for speculative demand for money so this is the reason why our shape is negative and inclined now guys if you notice from here we are falling till e double dash but from e double dash to say point q i have labeled it like that there is a straight line why is it the curve falling why why think about it so this is the situation of a liquidity trap which i have explained it over here here the rate of interest has fallen so low that now people don't you know expect it to even uh, fall so people think that you know at this point of time it becomes perfectly in, in uh, perfectly elastic our lp curve is a straight line if you can see rate of interest is so low that people hold it entirely in the form of cash so at this point our economy is stuck our money supply gets trapped and we are in a situation of a liquidity trap the monetary policy is pretty much ineffective at this particular point i have made a video on monetary policy i'll attach it it's link in the comment section below where i have linked the monetary policy to the liquidity trap at this point fiscal policy steps in let's not go over there but this is the point of you know liquidity trap so this is the diagram and this is all about the speculative motive for demand for money i hope this video made you understand this concept in thorough detail thank you so much for watching and i'll watch you out in the next video